Today in the news, we talk about overclocking some Zen 2, an overclocked GPU, and an overclocking utility. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. After the release of a brand new CPU or GPU, companies usually make the rounds doing press conferences all around the world. Well, during a London gathering, Travis Kirsch from AMD opened up on the overclocking capabilities of Zen 2. He said that in the top of the stack of the upcoming Ryzen CPUs, you're going to be fairly limited initially, probably referring to Ryzen 9 CPUs. He then added, with our boost algorithms, we eke out just about everything you can get, so maybe a couple of hundred megahertz. With the 65 watt parts, you'll get a lot more because their specs are running with a lower power. So you can overclock the thing, get all the power out of it, and obviously, you get more headroom out of it. There's a few interesting things to note here. AMD doesn't do an all-core boost, so when Travis says maybe a couple of hundred megahertz, we're probably looking at precision boost overdrive, which means that the top of the stack like a Ryzen 9 3950X might reach something like 4.9, maybe five gigahertz, but only on one core. This makes me pretty curious about all-core overclocking capabilities. In the past, Ryzen overclocking for an all-core boost usually resulted in matching the boost performance of the highest core speed. So so this might also be what you're going to get on Zen 2. Another interesting thing is that the 3700X might be your best bang for your buck for an 8 core CPU. At just 65 watts and more headroom, as Travis says, you could easily overclock that CPU to the same speed as the 3800X, which is just 100 megahertz away in turbo clock speeds and 300 in base. As for the 3800X, it is a 105 watt part, which means AMD squeezed it quite good and there might not be that much juice left in it. Wow, that's gross. Oh, and of course, you would save $70 by choosing the 3700X. The 3800X is honestly in a quite weird spot, although it's not the first time AMD releases a CPU like that. The main difference being the 65 watt TDP of the 3700X, and it could be appealing compared to the 105 of the 3800X. It's the same reason why I personally chose a 1700X instead of an 1800X back in the day when I bought my CPU. I saved about 70 bucks and overclocked my CPU to an all core of 3.9 instead of the max boost clock of four gigahertz on the one core for the 1800X. Now I know that a lot of you guys were eyeing the 3800X, so if the 3700X turns out to be an overclocking beast, would you be willing to get that instead if it took a little tinkering from your part, or do you prefer stock speeds for stability? Let me know down below. Then in GPU news, with the announcement of the RX 5700 series, we also got our first look at AMD's surprise 5700 XT 50th Anniversary Edition. This limited edition GPU gives us a glimpse into the overclocking capabilities of AMD's Navi with a small 4% improvement to the clock speed. If you wanted this GPU though, I'm afraid it's inaccessible to a lot of us. Apparently, AMD will only be selling the limited edition black and gold card in the US and in China. I guess it makes sense in a way. Making the card available everywhere would mean more units to be produced, which translates into a less exclusive limited edition. Anyways, while I thought about getting one just to get a piece of AMD history, I guess I could just settle for the $50 discount. Oh, and if you were hoping for third-party coolers on the 5700 series at launch, I'm afraid you might have to wait a little longer. Sources told Fudzilla that third-party custom designs won't arrive until mid-August, and that is if all goes well. Next up, Intel just launched a brand new auto overclocking tool. It's called the Intel Performance Maximizer, and unfortunately, it only works with a handful of 9th gen processors from the i5-9600KF to the i9-9900K. Like most auto overclocking utilities, you just press start and your computer will run through a loop where CPU voltage and multipliers are increased until it results in a crash. At that point, the software goes back one step and you have your overclock. The only issue is that it doesn't touch system memory, so your memory will stay at the default 2133 megahertz. Also, you won't know if that overclock will be viable once you enable XMP settings on your memory. PC Per did a comparison on Geekbench between stock settings, auto overclocked settings, and a simple manual overclock, and the results are quite surprising. Intel's performance maximizer can actually make you lose performance in certain situations. On the other hand, a simple manual overclock where memory is involved by just enabling the XMP settings resulted in a much stronger 
stronger score overall. With that, Intel also updated their performance tuning protection plan. Basically a warranty option that costs 20 bucks and will cover you if you uh, break your CPU during an overclock. All right, so since we had a lot of overclocking news, I thought I'd ask, how many of you guys are running on an overclocked system? Let me know down below, also with your stats, so I, I can see how good you guys are at overclocking. Or just to see who miserably lost at the Silicon Lottery. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Back of the head. You guys almost saw the back of my head. What?